Good morning, everybody. This is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We're back out here in the high tunnel, guys, and yes, it's cold. It's very cold in the Deep South. Our wind chill this morning is below 30, and uh, humidity is like 96%, and it's bone chilling. The wind is screaming outside, but we're in the high tunnel. And we thought, because we did the uh, videos on the high tunnel here a couple of weeks back, Lots of questions were asked about the high tunnel. What about this? What about that? You know, what do you get in the kit? Can we buy a high tunnel that looks like yours? Well, there's lots of yeses and lots of noes. So I'm going to try today to maybe clarify some of that. What kind of equipment are you using? Where did it come from? You know, what does it do? All this kind of stuff. We're going to start out with the basic kit from Grower Solutions. That's where our high tunnels came from. We bought them from them. Because we're in a high wind load area, hurricane zones, we opted to beef up the structure some. When you order a high tunnel kit from Grower Solutions, on the, the bow system here in the middle of the webbing, you only get every other one. But because we're in a hurricane zone, we ordered one for every bow that's up here to help the structural integrity of the of the high tunnel. Now it comes with a pipe system that goes in the corners for bracing, but we didn't feel like that that was going to be enough in our high wind zone area, so I opted to not put the pipes in. Now what we did do because I have constructed greenhouses for other people in the past. Um, I have designed end walls for them and stuff to withstand hurricanes and things, and so far they've done well. Uh, we put an extra amount of wood in our high tunnel. Now, when you purchase the wood to do your high tunnel with, you have all types of options available to you. The recommended way to do a high tunnel is for this header board that's right here to be up at the top so that you can roll the plastic all the way to the top. Well where we live at because of hurricanes we opted not to do that. We opted to drop it down to three feet high right here so that we could raise it up only three feet. And there's lots of reasons for this for us. One is structural, is the main thing. Secondly, is a lot of it has to do with insect control. Because where we live at in the south, insects are really bad. So what we done was we came back in and we, on the header board right here, we, we put some picture framing in. And we put one eighth inch hardware cloth, three feet high, on the outside out here to prevent insects from coming in. When we lift the sides up, they only lift up three feet high. When we lift them up there, the air can still pass in and cause a vortex because in order for you to get proper airflow in a high tunnel, you've got to have a vortex. And if it's rolled all the way to the top, you're not gonna get that vortex. You get a lot of wind pass passing through here, but we're looking for a vortex because the main issue, and we're going to show you in the other greenhouse down here in a minute, the main issue when you don't have air movement is mildews and moles and disease and stuff like this begins to set in. Now, when you lift these sides up, the air, hot air rises. Cool air comes in from the bottom. We have automatic vent openers at the top that are gel filled in this greenhouse or high tunnel should I say that when the temperature I have them set at about 85 degrees that when the temperature reaches 85 degrees in the top these cells begin to automatically open and be because the bottom is open and the cool air is coming in and the heat begins to rise it automatically goes out both ends of the greenhouse but what I have done also is installed a thermostatically controlled fan just right below those openers and I have it set at 85 I have it set at 87 degrees so that 
if it gets to be more than what the vents can allow to come out, the fan will kick on and begin to pull the other out. Now, when you do the end walls on these high tunnels, you have lots of options. You can order an end wall kit from Grower Solutions and put up where plastic covers the end, but because we're in a high wind area, like a hurricane zone, I constructed my own end walls. My end walls consist of four by sixes, sunk three feet in the ground, and they go all the way to the very top up there. Now we liked our high tunnel with a large door on one end and a small door on the other end. We have an eight foot door system on this end that open, the two of them open out. We have a four foot door on the other end of the high tunnel so that we can just go out it. We don't have to have it large because this end we come into with the tractor if we need to get in here. And on our doors, we put quarter inch hardware cloth to keep moss and stuff like that out at night. But since we've built this one, we have learned that we need to come back and put the screen, the eighth inch screen on the inside of this also to prevent smaller insects from coming in. This allows airflow through the ends of the doors. Even though the sides are down, it allows air to still pass through here from the ends so that we continually have our airflow in here. Now for the insects that do get in here, we have a bug zapper up here at night that if insects happen to get in here and we don't see them, a moth or something, then at night with this light on, those moths will leave the plants and come up here and they'll get zapped. And this particular one has a bottom that snaps off of it and the next morning you can take them to your chickens or whatever and feed them. This particular bug zapper is called a Dyna Trap. Now it's an expensive one, but we feel like it's well worth it. Now in this particular greenhouse, I in, or high tunnel, I installed electricity because we felt like that if we can control the environment a little better in a high tunnel, because most high tunnels don't have electricity to control the environment. We purchased a couple of things from Grower Solution in this one. One is these fans that we have up at the top here. These are called vortex fans. And what their purpose is, there's one on each side of the greenhouse, one in the front and one in the back. And what this does is the wind blows in opposing directions to one another down the greenhouse and it creates a swirling of air in the top of the greenhouse. In the summer months, we leave these running continually and it prevents the buildup of disease in the high tunnel. We also came back, we ran electricity down through the center here and we have these grow lights down the middle of it here so that if I need to, we can turn these grow lights on if we feel like we're not getting enough sunlight to, uh, to the plants. I installed an electrical panel over here that's fed by a main box up at the house so that we can have our electricity in here should we need it for some other reason. I installed an outlet over here which our fan is hooked into. This is the thermostat right here that controls that fan. I talked about up at the top. Everything is thermostatically controlled. In, re in relation to this, what that does is it turns this high tunnel into a greenhouse because we have it where we can close it all up and thermostatically control it. Now once we came in, well, a few things I want to cover, a lot of people say about the bracing. I was talking about that a while ago. What I've done on the bracing was I came in here with two by fours and I bolted them up at the top to the top header. It's bolted to the center header and it's also bolted to the bottom uh, seal plate with bolts. And then if need be, it can be strapped on the outside to each individual pipe that it goes past. We did this on all four corners of the high tunnel. That, that gives us even more stability. Plus we came in and we put a run of two by fours, three runs. We got one four foot from this end and then another one four foot and then another one four foot. These are where we run our electrical conduit down it 
And should we need to run irrigation up there, we can also run irrigation up there. Plus, it provides structural integrity to the high tunnel should the wind get to whipping these trusses or anything like that. It helps to stabilize them because they're all fastened off to these all the way down through it. Plus, it makes it a lot easier when you're constructing this thing. You can actually get up there and walk on them if you need to. Plus, when you uh, get the wind strapping for these kits, you only get enough strapping to do every other uh, bow section. But because of our wind area, we decided to order extra strapping to do every uh, bow section in here to make sure that we got the maximum potential to keep the plastic from beginning to pop or anything like that in a high wind. Now the uh, shade cloth on this one, we just ordered a shade cloth that came with this particular high tunnel. This is the dimensions that they send. What we done was we came back with rope and we put eye hooks in the, uh, the center header and we tied the shade cloth off with a rope down to those eye hooks all the way around the, the greenhouse high tunnel and we feel like that uh, that has been a good option for installing the shade cloth. Now the shade cloth on the ends installs with wiggle wire but down the sides we have rope all the way down through here. One other question we've been asked is about the uh, the covering in the bottom of the high tunnel. Uh, it came from Grower Solutions. You can order it in three foot, four foot, six foot wide rolls. Uh, we opted to order six foot wide rolls uh, and four foot wide rolls. And what we've done is once we got the greenhouse constructed, we, we ran, and, and in this greenhouse, we just started at the edge of the high, the raised beds and, and just ran it between the raised beds because we're putting in containers in the center. And we wanted this down through here so that we wouldn't have to worry about weeds or anything like that coming up in here. And it has actually worked well. We can come in here with a blower, blow it off, cleans it really easy. When we're weeding, we can just throw the weeds out on the fabric. And uh, when we get through, we can come through and take a blower and just blow it out the door. Makes it very simple to clean it up. Okay, we're over in the second uh, high tunnel. It's built exactly like the other high tunnel is built. I mean, the dimensions are all exact. The, the lumber is all in exactly the same place. It's, it's an identical replica of that one. The eight foot doors in the front, the four foot door in the back between the two. There is some differences in this one though. This one is all raised beds. Uh, we're not planting in any containers in here. It's all done in raised beds. And the fan system in the end up here is a huge fan system that uh, is used to pull air through here. It also has the same vortex fans in it that the other one has. We do not have at this time the electricity hooked up in this one yet. We're still working on it, getting it to that point. Um, one of the factors that I wanted to show you guys with not having electricity in a high tunnel and keeping it closed up is the fact of the disease. And these English peas here, we have tried and tried to get rid of the powdery mildew. It's just not possible. The humidity stays too high in this because we don't have the fans to circulate the air. We wanted to see just how bad it would be to control disease in here and it is extremely hard. Because outside right now, we're talking about 96% humidity. The, in, the side walls in this greenhouse right now, it's freezing outside. And because it's so humid in here, water's actually running down the insides of this high tunnel on the inside and the end walls. You can see all the water running down up here now because of the condensation. Uh, we could have combated this if we'd have had electricity where we could have turned the fans on and kept the air moving in here it would have prevented the condensation from happening. But um, because of this fan on this end, on the opposite end of the high tunnel, we had to install a louver system that uh, is going to be wired in with this fan to open at exactly the same time that the fan comes on. It's all thermostatically controlled so that when it comes on, one opens, the other one opens. This one, the sides roll up halfway just like the other one where the air can pass in. The only difference with this one is we do not have the gel filled vent openers at the top. 
is something, now this is something that um, we're beginning to maybe rethink and maybe think that maybe we should have put them up there in case power goes out. Uh, we can get up and prop the vents open so that uh, the air still gets out, but that means we have to be in here to do it. And we have to be monitoring the temperature constantly. Ms. Wanda has been coming out for the last two to three weeks every morning opening these vents up trying to let the air pass through here and it still has not done anything to combat the uh, the powdery mildew on these here. So we learned a hard lesson this year. Uh, now we did pick uh, off of these we we have actually put up in the freezer over three gallons of shelled out English peas We've ate, I don't even know how many meals we've ate off of these. I don't know how many we've ate fresh off of these. They're still loaded with beans, but probably in this coming week we're going to pull them up and get them out of here because they're just not, there's no sense in leaving them. Uh, they're going to die very quickly. And plus, I might add, we've actually harvested seeds from these. So, uh... If you're going to have a high tunnel and you're going to convert it into a greenhouse like we have where you can close it down and you can control the environment in it, you need electricity ran to it and you need water ran to it, which is still in the makings for these uh, in order to be able to control disease in them. Okay, we've been asked about the extreme heat in the summer. Can we use them? And in the winter, does it get too cold in them? Well, this is technically our first winter to have the high tunnels. So far, we've been in the, in the mid-20s several mornings. Uh, we've not got below freezing in one of these high tunnels yet. It stayed around 40 degrees, uh, even though it's been in the mid-20s outside and the wind blowing, as long as you close them down. In the summertime, uh, people were concerned about, man, y'all's temperature, you talk about it gets over 100 degrees. Yes, we've had them in the summer. And even though it got well over 100 degrees many, many days, the inside of the high tunnels, because of the 40% shade cloth that we have on them, never got that hot. Uh, they stayed in the high 80s. Occasionally it would reach 90 degrees in them. But with the sides rolled up, and the doors with the uh, screens in them and the uh, louvers open at the top. It was not a problem because it was, seems like there was always a breeze blowing through them because of the vortex that was created inside them. And therefore, the plants never suffered. They all done fantastic. Uh, now, we have two high tunnels right now. One of them is predominantly to be kept warm in the winter time, like it is now in here close down completely. The other one we leave open because it has cool weather stuff in it. Um, we have fruit trees and stuff like that in there that need chill hours so we have to make sure that the temperature in there stays 40 degrees or cooler, uh, 45 degrees or cooler to get the number of chill hours that we need for our peaches and our apples and different things in there that we have our plums. Uh, we're going to have grapes and different things in there. All this needs to be kept cool. We have garlic, onions, and all this stuff, cabbages, uh, broccolis, and things like this that need cool weather. This greenhouse, does, uh, high tone, does not grow that type stuff. This one grows some cool stuff, like the English peas were cool weather crop here. But we have onions in here uh, also, but they'll be coming out here just as soon as it warms up and everything else in here will be things that's like green beans which we grew this past summer in here worked fantastic we have tomatoes over here right now still have tomatoes on them even though it's been in freezing outside the tomatoes have done fine this particular high tunnel here we put a white shade cloth on it to see the variances in the temperature differences between that high tunnel and this high tunnel and um we're noticing a considerable amount of differences in the temperatures. Uh, this shade cloth, we custom ordered it. Uh, it goes all the way down on the east side. It's where the grommets are. We use fender washers and roofing screws to fasten it on that side. 
and then the north side did not go all the way down because the sun does not hit the north side of it like it does the east side or north or, or south east side so we opted to use the ropes on that side to fasten it to the eyelets like we did on the first high tunnel it's going to be a interesting summer to see how the white shade cloth 40 percent compares with the dark shade cloth 40 percent in the winter we're already noticing that the white is a lot hotter than the dark is so since that one is uh since this one is hotter the darker one has stayed cooler well we didn't expect that but that is what has happened so far but when the summertime comes and we get all the fans hooked up and everything gets to running we'll see how it goes during that time and we can give you a, probably give you a better answer so guys i hope this will answer some of the questions about the high tunnels we've been in and if you have even any more questions just put them in the comments down below we'll try to get to them if we can and we'll try to answer them to the best of our abilities uh, we had some comments from some of our subscribers that said grower solutions was not taking any more orders um, that's a yes and a no grower solutions is still giving quotes uh, they're probably by the time this video airs they will be back up and producing again but because of the videos we've been putting out between us uh, roots and refuge uh, living traditions Kevin and Sarah uh, grower solutions have been overwhelmed with uh, with greenhouses and plants and all the different stuff the ground cover and all this kind of stuff to the point where they've had to shut down orders temporarily to get caught up because it's just been such a large demand for them so uh you can still call i called the other day and spoke um with tyler tyler told me said that um they're still giving quotes so if you want a quote on a high tunnel call them and get a quote now that you can get any size you want any design and if you live in a snow load area you don't want one like i've got you want to order what they call a quonson hut it's kind of pointed on the top and comes down you want to make sure you get that type if you're where there's a snow load um, they just sell regular hoop houses they they sell hobby greenhouses i mean they you just tell them what you want they can make it or either they already have it so guys uh, maybe this will answer a lot of your questions and uh, check out grower solutions if you use our promo code deep south you should get a 10 percent discount off of anything that you purchase there but remember it's a one-time deal so make sure whatever you want you get it all in that order to get that 10 percent discount off of your order so thank you guys from deep south homestead